Does following a low carb, high fat diet like the ketogenic diet cause your cholesterol to go up? And if it does, is that a bad thing? In this video, we're gonna assess the benefits and the risks from eating saturated fat and cholesterol on your keto diet, and we're gonna review the specific lab markers to request from your doctor to know whether or not keto is working for you. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp, and hey, here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. In this 10-part series of understanding how keto works, in the previous video, we talked about five signs to pay attention to to know whether or not you are in ketosis and are fat adapted. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you sticker tap this and watch it when this video is done. But here, we're gonna talk about cholesterol. There are so many myths regarding cholesterol and saturated fat, and we're gonna debunk a lot of these myths. But before we do, I have a question for you, which is the question of the day. Has your doctor told you that you have high cholesterol? And has your doctor recommended something like a statin? Let me know by commenting in the section down below. So let's dig into why cholesterol has had such a bad rap and why it has such a poor PR team. Let's get into the research of Ansel Keys. So a lot of people ask me the question, which is, Ben, will my cholesterol go up on a ketogenic diet? Maybe, but is that a bad thing if it does? Well, let's break it all down. The reason cholesterol has such a bad rap is because of this gentleman you see right here. His name is Ansel Keys. And if you wanna learn more about the history of this, I, I recommend reading Nina Teicholt's book called The Big Fat Surprise. But this gentleman was the creator of the World War II K ration. He's the author of what's called the Seven Country Study, which he excluded 16 countries that didn't support his narrative, his theory. Uh, he was the reason why we got into the trans fat margarine and started to eat low fat, fat free, Here's the deal. Here's how Ansel Keys faked it. He said in his research that these six studies, or I should say these six countries, had high amounts of heart attacks, and he correlated that to the high amount of cholesterol they consume. But they were consuming rancid fats. And he also didn't share that he surveyed 22 countries but he didn't see a good relationship there. It, was a, it didn't support his theory, so he excluded that intentionally. He fooled the world, essentially, and we're still dealing with his false data. So the reason Ansel Keys and a lot of people say cholesterol is bad for you is because they say, hey, when we do autopsies on heart attack victims, these heart attack victims show a lot of cholesterol that's built up in the arteries therefore the cholesterol is what caused the damage is what they say is that true well i don't think it is well i know that it's not because that's like saying hey we always show up to, when buildings are on fire we show up to the fire and there's always firefighters at the building what gives why are there always firefighters at the building therefore we're gonna say the firefighters are what caused the fire in the building no no that's not true the firefighters are there to protect to help with the inflammation the fire to put out the fire the firefighters are healing the firefighters are a band-aid the firefighters are helping with the problem which is inflammation the fire so when we see cholesterol cholesterol is a band-aid cholesterol is a healer there is very many many important reasons why we love cholesterol in the body so here's the deal this study in science news showed that most heart attack patients cholesterol levels did not indicate heart attack or cardiac risk another study in harvard showed that more people get this more people die from heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than with high cholesterol what how is that even true well, is the media talking about this? Is your doctor, doctor talking about this? No. So there are four main purposes of cholesterol that I'm going to break down for you right now. Number one, it's going to be the fact that cholesterol is the building blocks of your hormones. 
Look, if you want to burn fat, if you want to feel good, if you want to have healthy hormones, eat quality cholesterol, non-rancid fats, which I'll talk about a little bit later, which are those fats. But cholesterol, LDL cholesterol makes your sex hormones, okay? The brain is mostly fat, which we'll get into, but also your cell membranes are also made up of protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. We have over 600 hormones in the body, and hormones are just chemical messengers. Hormones are sending signals to your cells. They are docking on your receptor sites, which are also called integral membrane proteins. The message is going within your cells. Your cells are producing energy. Your mitochondria is burning fat and you feel good. That's what cholesterol is doing. So if you deprive your body from cholesterol, you deprive this process. It doesn't work efficiently. Number two, I already mentioned that your cell membrane is made up of cholesterol, protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Look, the cell membrane is the key to health. Dr. Daniel Pompo, my coach and mentor, says it all the time. Life begins and life ends at the cell membrane. The cell membrane is this lipid bilayer around your 70 trillion cells that protects your cells, okay? It is the bodyguard of your cells. It allows good things in, it allows bad things out. It tells your genes to turn on good genes and it tells your genes to turn off bad genes. That's correct. You could control your genetics. You cannot change your genes, but you can control whether or not you want to turn on or turn off genes. So think of genes as a light switch you turn on and turn off. And what communicates to your DNA nucleus is the cell membrane. So when you eat quality fats and give your cell membranes these building blocks, this process works the way that God created us and the way that it's designed to work. Your brain is also made up of cholesterol and your nervous system. So we know that at least 60% of the brain is fat. So when somebody says, hey, fat head, say thank you so much. I know I'm very smart and I am designed this way. <laughs> so fat is important for your brain to function. Think about this. Breast milk is made up of saturated fat and cholesterol because it helps the development of the brain. So babies do go in and out of ketosis, by the way, because the breast milk has saturated fat and cholesterol. The next thing is that cholesterol helps to make bile and vitamin D. Why is bile important? Well, if you're eating fats on keto, which you should be eating quality fats, bile is what helps break down the fat. It is a detergent to help break down the fat and assimilate those fat soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Bile breaks it down. Bile also helps eliminate toxins and cholesterol also makes helps your body synthesize and create um, vitamin D. So the number one reason people feel like crap on keto is they can't make healthy bile. Well, cholesterol helps make healthy bile. And vitamin D, by the way, is actually a hormone within the body, uh, particularly a um, steroid hormone in the body. So we know that vitamin D is really a precursor to a steroid hormone. And vitamin D impacts your skeletal structure, it also helps with your blood pressure, your immune system, mood, brain function, and the ability to protect against certain cancers. So we should not be afraid of cholesterol. So how do you test for cholesterol? First of all, let me, let me show you something here. Let me stop my share. So when it comes to measuring your cholesterol in the body, it's important to understand this. Cholesterol cannot freely move through the body. It needs to be carried in a vehicle, which is also a particle. These particles are called LDL particles. Now, LDL has been coined the bad cholesterol, but that's not necessarily true. Nothing in the body is black and white. <laughs> it's very important to understand the body is very complex. So let's break down why it's important to, yes, get your LDL measurements done, but the particles are what's really important when assessing your risk of heart disease. So when uh, your doctor measures your LDL and says, hey, you have high LDL, we are concerned, we need to put you on a statin. What your doctor is measuring is the amount of cholesterol within an LDL particle. As you can see here, if you have high cholesterol within a certain particle, your doctor is going to say you have high LDL. If you have low cholesterol within a certain particle, your doctor is gonna say you have low LDL. But this is not important. This, because look, here's the analogy. This vehicle right here, you see this car, two people inside, 
Let's imagine this vehicle is now in a traffic jam on the highway, they are stuck. What's more important in that traffic jam? The number of people inside of the vehicle, right? The number of cholesterol inside the particle or the number of cars on the road. Of course, the number of people within the vehicle is irrelevant to the traffic jam. What's more important is the number of cars on the road. Same thing with your cholesterol LDL particles. The total amount of LDL is irrelevant. We wanna know how many particles are on the road because just like this analogy, the more vehicles on the road, on the highway, the more oxidative stress from the car fumes, the more accidents that will occur, the more damage that is done. Same thing with your LDL particles. If you have too many particles, especially these small and sticky ones that I'm gonna break down, it can cause inflammation in your arterial wall leading to heart disease. So it's important to measure your LDL particles because they're also split into two different categories. We have the large and fluffy LDL particles and then we have the small and sticky. So if you look here, this is your artery. If you have a ton of large and fluffy LDL particles, that's what this represents, these larger dots. These are actually good particles that go through your arteries. They could actually help clear up plaque and they're not a problem. But if you have a lot of these small and sticky particles, which you see right here that are lodged into the arterial wall, that could lead to problems, especially if you also have inflammation present with those small and sticky particles because the inflammation will drive those small particles to your arterial wall as a way to kind of clean it up and repair it. Remember the firefighter analogy? It's there to repair the, the problem. So we wanna make sure we're measuring both particles. And let's get into some more of these measurements. I'm gonna give you the optimal ranges for this and other markers to assess. Here's what I want you to do. Get your total cholesterol done. And here are just general markers for you to pay attention to. So I hope you're writing these down. I'll, I'll explain it. So we want for women, your cholesterol, total cholesterol should be somewhere between 250 or lower. For men, it should be um, 220 or lower. These are just general terms. Remember, total cholesterol doesn't mean much if you're not looking at the full spectrum. But measure the particles via a test called NMR test. An NMR test is looking at, it's called nuclear magnetic resonance. Nuclear magnetic resonance, which is looking at your LDL particle sizes. So yes, NMR test is going to look at the different particles so we want our LDLP to be less than 1,000 and our small LDL to be less than 500. Then we want to look at our HDL, which is high density lipoprotein. This is very protective. We want our HDL to be 70 or higher, that's optimal. Our triglycerides, we want that to be 100 or less or even better under 70. And then we also want to look at our triglyceride uh, to HDL ratio. So we want, to, we want to divide your total triglycerides by HDL and if you have greater than six, this could be a problem. Two or less is optimal, all right? So these are the markers that I want you to test for, but also we wanna look at your inflammatory markers because it's not just your lipid profile, your cholesterol profile that's important. It's also putting that in the perspective of how much oxidative stress is in your body. So looking at your inflammatory markers. So here are the markers that I test on myself and I recommend to the members of the Keto Camp Academy. We want to look at high sensitivity C-reactive protein. This is a great marker to assess your risk of a cardiovascular event. Optimal is less than one, even better, less than 0.5. We also want to look at homocysteine, which is inflammation in your arteries, but also in the brain. We want this to be less than 10, optimally less than five. And then we want to look at our, our A1C, which is your three-month average of your fasting glucose, or I should say your glucose in general. We want to look at your A1C. We want to keep it below 5.2. And then we want to look at your fasting insulin. We want to keep that below 10. And you want to maintain a fasting glucose of around 72 to 90. If you're hitting those numbers, then you are not driving these cholesterol particles into your arteries to create problems. So the question is asked, what about eggs? What about avocados, coconut oils? These drive my cholesterol up. They might like they do for me, but they drop my inflammatory marker. So as long as you're seeing that trend, when I'm seeing that trend, I love that trend, okay? So eggs will not cause heart disease. Quality healthy fats like coconut oil, avocados, grass-fed beef, uh, wild-caught fish, 
healthy, stable, saturated fats will not lead to heart disease. What will lead to heart disease? I'm glad that you asked. Vegetable oils and high carbohydrate, high sugar processed foods will lead to heart disease. That means we don't want to consume things like canola oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil. We don't want to eat high carbs. We don't want to eat a whole bunch of processed foods because that will lead to heart disease. That will lead to issues with your health. So now you understand the root cause of heart disease. It is not healthy fats that you're having on keto. Those healthy fats are actually reducing inflammation. It's actually these inflammatory fats. It's the high sugars, high carbohydrates, these processed foods that are the real culprit. Something else I know you're wondering is how is eating fat going to help you lose fat? A lot of people believe that fat makes you fat. Is that true? Well, in the next video, I break down how keto works with weight loss and how you could achieve amazing fat loss benefits when you follow keto the right way. So if you wanna learn how to use keto as a powerful fat loss tool, click this video right here, watch it, and I'll see you in the next video.